The biggest mistake that most people make when dating. Hello and welcome to this How to Love Successfully podcast with me, Dr. Marie Kovanen, a marriage psychologist and a conscious dating coach. Today we'll be talking about this common mistake that most people make when they start dating and how that will influence your dating experience and potentially results too, and how to change that. But first of all, would you like to feel blissfully calm and grounded and be present on your first date? Well, I have recorded pre-date bliss meditation, which can help you to feel exactly that. It can help you to feel more grounded and present, relaxed, and help you to engage with that more peaceful side of you when you go on your first date. Of course, first dates can always be a little bit nerve-wracking and we need all the support there is to help us. So let's get back to our topic today. What is the biggest mistake that most people make when they start dating? The most common mistake that I've noticed that people make when they start dating is what I call autopilot dating. And I had personal experience of this too. So I speak from both from personal experience, but of course, working with various single women over time. And what does this autopilot dating mean? It means that you have perhaps decided that you're going to start dating now. You have recovered from your previous relationship experience and you've decided that I'm going to start dating. Okay. So perhaps you sign up with some online dating agencies. Maybe you create a profile and you you put a few details about yourself and what you're looking for out there. It might be that you're just doing that. It might be that you go to some in-person dating events or you register with dating agencies and You hope for the best. You hope that you will meet the person who is the right fit for you. What happens is that hoping for the best in many times can lead you to wasting time, wasting really your precious time on people who are not there for the right reasons or who are not the right fit for you. You might even end up in the wrong relationship if you Just put yourself out there and start dating. And and people have said to me, clients have said to me previously that I thought that you have to just go on as many dates as possible. And that's indeed what I thought too when I was dating in my 30s. I thought that the more you date, the better chances you have of finding the right person for you. And yes, it might work for you, but it also might mean that if you are perhaps even more introverted and you have to save your energy in some ways and you have a busy life, busy work and everything. So you have limited time for dating. And if you spread your time and energy really thinly, then you might feel like you are burning out on dating apps and it feels like, what is the point of this all? Maybe I should just give up. Or you might end up just using your gut feeling and the chemistry that you feel with someone, this sexual chemistry, you might use that as a a sign for compatibility. And then you might end up in the wrong relationship. This kind of autopilot dating is very common, but it can get you in the completely wrong place and feeling so burnt out and fed up with dating. And so many people say, oh, I just can't be bothered. I've had enough of dating. And as you can see, for example, if you think about a ship, yes, you use a metaphor of a ship here. If you have a ship and you go out there on the sea, and if you don't have a map, if you don't have a plan where you're going, you're going all over the place. You're going just everywhere. And if you're trying to fish even, and you literally cast your net as wide as possible, you might catch a lot, 
but are you catching the right kind of, right quality fish? And the same with your ship. When then it, you, when you don't have a nap and I don't quite know how to navigate, you will end up all over the place and you end up wasting time. You get frustrated and you burn out on. So what do you need to do instead? What will help you to be more focused, more purposeful, more present and get you the results hopefully faster? but also without draining yourself and gets you in the right relationship and meeting the right person. Because that person is out there somewhere. There are so many people on this planet that there's got to be the right person for you, the right fit. But if you don't have a map or strategy, you will end up in all sorts of places. So let's think about what you need to do and how to become more focused, how to become more conscious in your dating. So conscious dating really means that, first of all, you empower yourself. So you own your own feelings. You get to know yourself. You learn to regulate your emotions. You really know who you are, what your story is, what are the messages from your early relationships in your family dynamic even, and what is the kind of natural pull? What is the dynamic that you naturally gravitate towards, even if it's not always so helpful? So you need to understand all of this and need to think about your values. What are your qualities? What are the qualities that you like about yourself? What are the qualities that you don't like about yourself? And you also need to own yourself. You need to own also the parts of you, perhaps it's sometimes called the shadow parts of you, the parts of you that you perhaps personally sort of struggle with. Because when you learn to appreciate all of your parts, you will also then attract the person who appreciates you as a whole person. Because if you disown those parts of you that you don't like, then you're likely to attract a person who also doesn't appreciate those qualities. So you end up in the wrong relationship. You end up always having to hide certain parts of you. You need to have certain self loving practices. You need to kind of keep practicing this connection with yourself. Those self-loving practices, what they do is that they fill your cup on a daily basis. So you are directing this loving energy towards yourself. And then you are dating them from a position of, I am whole and I'm looking for another person who's also whole. And together, we will then build this beautiful relationship together, which we negotiate. And we know what we want. And we also express that in the relationship. And we negotiate. So this doesn't mean that you have to be completely, have resolved all of your internal turmoils or all of your internal dilemmas. Because none of us is completely fixed. We are constantly evolving. And that is absolutely fine. But it is important that you know yourself enough to know then that what kind of person would be a good fit for you. You also need to date from a place of detaching yourself from the outcome of the dating game. And I don't mean about playing games here, but what it means is that you're giving yourself all of this loving attention and you are dating from a place of calm. I am whole. I know what I want. What are the key qualities and behaviors that I want to see in my future relationship? And when you start dating from that place, 
you also then vet in a much more careful way who you're going on dates with, what kind of questions you're going to be asking, and what are the standards for yourself. So you are connecting with yourself and giving yourself the loving attention all the time. That way, when you also then detach from the outcome of the dating, you're not so dependent on his approval, but it becomes more about empowering yourself and thinking, are we a good fit? Does he meet what I'm really looking for? Instead of just hoping that he is the one. And, and perhaps falling into this position of worrying about how does he view me? Because you've already filled your cup and you have given yourself the loving attention. Then you are much more grounded. And this is why also I've created this pre-date bliss meditation. So you can find the details in the show notes. And when you date in a much more conscious way, when you own yourself, all of your qualities, and you understand your history and what you're looking for, then you are not wasting your time. You are much more focused and you re- actually save your energy on the right people on, for the right dates. You also need to have a bit of a strategy, of course, and you cut your losses when you notice that this is not for you. Instead of wondering, where should I go? You have a roadmap. You have that map to sail your ship to the right direction. So I hope that you found this useful. So remember, self-connection is the most important thing when you are dating. Because that will help you to get where you want to go faster and also in the right direction. So if you enjoyed this podcast and found it useful, please go and and share it with someone who might need to also hear this message. I would also love if you could go and leave a review. And I hope that you will come back and listen for the next one. So please remember... Give yourself the love you're seeking and you will attract the love back.